Let's go on to the line now and speak with a member of parliament for Boku Central, Mahama Yarga, to find out if the caucus has actually decided to change the route initially announced. Good evening to you, sir, and thank you for joining us on Eyewitness News. Honorable, your concern or your caucus is that uh, you want to protest against the governor of the Bank of Ghana. But yesterday you met with the police and in that meeting you actually pushed strongly to get the governor of the Bank of Ghana and his deputy out of office. Uh, first clarify for us, what was uh, in terms of uh, the outcome of the engagement, what really did you agree on? Uh, good evening to you and your listeners. Yesterday, they agreed to allow us to have our demonstration as planned in terms of the scheduled date, but uh, expressed disagreement in relation to the route. They proposed an alternative route. Uh, they wanted us to start from Obra Sport at Circle, uh, march along the road to Accra Central at Adabraka. They wanted us to turn left and then use the road that takes you to City House. And from City House through the ministries, I think, and then we should terminate at Independence Square. And the reasons they proposed that route was because they wanted to minimize uh, interference with uh, commercial activities, and most importantly, they argued that the Bank of Ghana uh, headquarters building is a security zone, and they will not allow us to march to a security zone. We argued that their arguments were very flawed, very flawed because the, the route they designated for us required that we should pass through City House. So we drew the attention to the fact that City House is actually Bank of Ghana annex. So if we were uh, to endanger Bank of Ghana, we could equally endanger City House, which is a Bank of Ghana annex. The same workers at Bank of Ghana are also working at City House for Bank of Ghana. So that argument was just untenable. Secondly, we also argued that the seat of government, which is the Flagstaff House, the Jubilee House, we have marched there before and presented petitions. So if it was possible to march to uh, Jubilee House, you cannot say that uh, for national security considerations, uh, people can march to City House, and yet they cannot march to the frontage of the Bank of Ghana. And they said they didn't want us to march through uh, Makola and then uh, Rollins Park and, and uh, Opera Square because uh, it is a busy commercial area. And we pointed out to them that we have done that before. We have held demonstrations and passed through those same routes and even passed by the Bank of Ghana office and all the banks that are there. So there was really no grounds for asking us to change our route because anything that they mentioned, we have done it before and they, the police, have uh, policed those demonstrations and they were very successful and very peaceful. And we're assuring them that the way that they manage those demonstrations, they have the capacity to manage this one also. And so they had no real grounds for asking us to change our route. So we insisted that we would definitely use the route that we had proposed. And so they should just go and prepare themselves to provide uh, security on those routes. And um, later on in the day, they sent a letter to us in which they proposed something completely different from the two uh, proposals that were even on the table when we met. They proposed that we should uh, march from, we should converge in front of Parliament House and then, you know, <laughs> march to... Independent Square from Parliament House, and we should terminate at Independent Square from Parliament House. We told them that we find that very ridiculous because our entire protest is to point out the mismanagement of the governor and his deputies and his board. And so the whole protest is targeted at the central bank. And so why would you ask us to march to Independent Square and terminate? Uh, march from Parliament House to Independence Square. We said we would not do that. The police explanation you describe as untenable, but it's just a protest. And the central bank is a security installation for which reason 
uh, the police has cited security reasons for your inability to protest to the central bank. If you do not go to the central bank, does it really affect your push for the removal of the governors? First and foremost, it is a big lie that the uh, central bank building is the security installation. There has to be a law that defines it as a security installation, and there's no such law. I don't recall any single law in this country that defines a central bank building as a security installation. It's a big lie. Anybody who tells the security installation is, is, is lying to you. It's just a central bank building. And the central bank is just a regulator, and people you know, work from there. It's a building. And we're not asking to go into the central bank, not even the premises of the central bank. Our letter is specific, that we are marching to the front page of the central bank. And then we expect the governor and his deputies to come out and come and receive our petition. So one, central bank is not a security installation. Two, we can march there because we have a democratic right to march there. Three, the Ghana police service are paid a salary precisely because of a day like this when we have to march through Makola to central bank and then present a petition that they use their skills, professionalism, and all the tools that we have empowered them with to secure us to march there and disperse peacefully and safely. That's their responsibility. We are going to the central bank to hold the governor accountable. They should also be held accountable in terms of the standard of responsibility of a police service, which is to make sure that when citizens have to exercise their democratic rights, they are there to police them to exercise that democratic right, not to adopt a lazy approach of saying that, you know, this building is a security installation, so you cannot go there. Where else can we go? If we can go to the Jubilee House where the president sits and works, where else can't we go to in this country? So now that you're in disagreement with the directive from the police, what really is your position now in terms of the protest you want to organize? The police have no power to give us directives in this regard. They have absolutely no power. The law only says that we should notify them so that they can make arrangements to provide protection for those who have to demonstrate and also provide protection along but, the way. But in instances where the police feels that your protest is actually a security threat, it can't deny you that right. They cannot deny us. I'm telling you that they cannot deny us a right to protest along the routes that we have. Go and check the law. If they have to stop us, it is not they who will do it. It has to be a higher authority, and they know. So the police cannot tell us that we cannot we cannot demonstrate along those routes. So what options are left for you now? To let them know that we will be marching on that day along the routes that we have proposed to them, and therefore they should prepare to be there to provide us with the, the protection. They've done it before. There is no route there that we haven't demonstrated before that the police have not secured the demonstrators and secured those living along or working along the path of the demonstration route. So it's, it's uh, just uh, an attempt to find a way of frustrating the organization, but they will not succeed because we definitely will carry out the demonstration and it will be along that route and we will get to the Bank of Ghana frontage and the governor will come down and receive our petition. I see. But really, is the minority not on a wild goose chase? Because in the past, we've seen uh, protests and demonstrations from your end. One, including the Arise Ghana protests, one that you were calling for the removal of Ken Uforiata. All of these have not yielded the results that you actually wanted. What makes you think that this time around you are going to get the governors of the Bank of Ghana out of office? You watch us. We have decided that we will continue to protest until the governor leaves office. And if that people doesn't happen... Must be held, listen, listen. People must be held accountable when they clearly mismanage state institutions. And we're talking about securing our democracy. The democracy must function. And the democracy functions when you use the tools to achieve the right results. We are discussing Niger, we are discussing countries where there are military coups and etc. And you saw how the public was excited about a military takeover in that country. Why do you think it is what we are seeing? Because citizens increasingly are losing confidence in the democratic process resolving their issues. And so 
Increasingly in West Africa, you see military taking over and citizens are excited and happy and giving them all the support. So when institutions are mismanaged and the evidence is clear and people are asking for accountability, we must take those calls serious. Because if we don't take those calls serious, trust me, we are not an exceptional country. And our citizens, their tolerance levels have limits. And you shouldn't overstretch their tolerance levels and mismanage public institutions and think that you should get away with it and nobody should hold you accountable. Ghanaians have a limit to their tolerance levels. So let us take our democracy seriously. So this is not a joke about, you know, simple politicking. We are looking fundamentally at the fabric of our democracy and making sure that we demonstrate to Ghanaians our readiness as a minority, to hold government accountable. So if people think that this is just a joke and this and that, we are not treating it as a joke. We demand the removal of the governor and his deputies and the board because you cannot so mismanage a central bank that you will lose 60 billion cities and then bring it to a, neg a negative equity of 55 billion cities. And then you will go and take, you know, 222 million United States dollars you go and construct an office building when PPA recommended to you that you should use 81 million United States dollars. I mean, in, in this situation where there is a serious crisis, I mean, that's, that's not the kind of mm. signal that leaders should send to, to citizens. When there's, there's suffering all over, and you are saying that those institutions cannot be held accountable. And when you do that, you set very bad examples for future leaders. If we allow this to pass, can you imagine what a future central bank governor will do? I see, but, but honorable, the central bank has, has provided justifications for some of these things. For example, they say that the losses are technical the losses. And they breached the law. They breached the law. Okay, but, but, but quickly, let, let's wrap up, Honorable. Is it a case yeah. that uh, you are going ahead with the protest regardless on 5th September or you are willing to engage the police further? to come to an amicable you know, resolve in finding the roots for this particular one. The law, the law says that we should give them notice. We have given them notice. They invited us. We went. And then we discussed and we insisted that we are going to use the routes that we will use. They have issued a statement and then they have written to us. We will respond to them. If they invite us for further discussion, we will go. Otherwise, we've made it very clear to them the routes that we are going to use. But we'll respond to their letter and we'll make it known to them that All right. uh, they have absolutely no justification for changing our route.